right, this is resistance to social influence for A-level psychology. Um, and in my last video, we looked at locus of control and how that could affect uh, whether you resist social influence or not. In this video, we're going to focus on this second factor, social support, which is a situational factor because it concerns the situation around you. So this links with page 28 of your booklets. So here we go. Having other people present who aren't conforming and obeying um, is, is basically what this factor is all about. If you have somebody else to give you social support in your disobedience or in not going along with everyone else, that really helps you to, not, to also resist the power of social influence. So uh, let's have a look at some research We've come across this in various different studies. It's just about because when we went through the studies, we were looking actually at those who did conform and obey. You just need to flip them around a bit. So Rankin Jacobson study where, with the nurses. Remember, there's two studies with nurses. The first one, one with Hoffling, found that 21 out of 22 nurses obeyed and went ahead. Rankin Jacobson, if you remember, reran this experiment uh, where they were giving a, a doctor was giving an order to a nurse and seeing if she would carry it out. Uh, and in that particular instance, only two out of 18 nurses actually obeyed. So you can see many of the nurses did resist social influence. Um, we've also seen it in Milgram although I think we may not have talked about this particular variation but there was a variation in Milgram where there was another person present who was also who is a well a confederate uh, and that other person disobeyed the instruction from the experimenter and in that case uh, the obedience rate in Milgram fell all the way down to 10 percent so even lower than the other factors that we looked at. So the, there we are. The, the, um, there's two studies there that shows people who were resisting obedience because of social support. Because uh, in Rankin Jacobson, if you remember, the nurses um, were asked to do the um, to administer the medication at a time when there were other nurses around that they could could talk to, which was different from Hoffling's experiment where it was done, I think, on the night shift, went deliberately so that there wasn't anyone else they could talk to. So that's two uh, different studies showing the link. And then if we look, go back to Ash, Ash's variations, so thinking now about conformity, where we've seen people who will resist the, the power of conformity, um, when um, and again these are variations that we haven't looked at already more variations um, but for example the first one here if the, um, the the actual participant had one other person who was giving the correct answer rather than the incorrect answer so if the I mean, we have sort of looked about at this because it means the group isn't unanimous, the majority. Uh, the conformity rate then drops to only 5% if you give them somebody else to also give the correct answer. So that's gone to a really low conformity rate there. Um, this second one here, when you start with a partner who gives the correct answer for six of the critical trials... And then that person switches to the incorrect answer. We call this losing a partner. So you have a partner at first uh, and then they drop out. However, you can see the conformity rate here still drops, not as much, because when they lose that partner, they tend to conform immediately because uh, it's a bit unsettling. But yeah, you've gone down from 36% down to 28% conformity for those critical trials overall. And then on this last variation, if you've got a person who um, gives the wrong answer for the first six critical trials and then dissents um, and gives the correct answer along uh, along with the participant, you, i.e. you give them social support, the conformity rate drops right down to 8.7%. So again, in all of these examples, you can see the conformity rate has dropped from the original. When you give somebody else social support, you give them another person there who is also resisting the power of social influence, it makes them more able to resist the power of conformity. 
So that's linking uh, the idea of social support with the um, with the idea of resisting social influence, with the ability to resist social influence. Right. Let's look at some evaluation. So what we've got here is basically a study that contradicts this idea. As we've said, the idea of um, social support is a situational factor. Uh, Crutchfield's research found that there were a, a load of people with various characteristics who, and all of these people were less likely to conform, i.e. more likely to resist social influence. And you, I've put the list here. I don't need to read through all of this. You can all read. Self, um, people who were really confident, people who uh, had high intellect, a low need for social approval and so on. These, as you'll see, are all what's called dispositional factors. They're to do with personality to do with something inside that person it's their disposition their personality so that Crutchfield's research suggested it was more uh, if someone's not conforming it's more to do with them as a person rather than the situation that they're in um, on the plus side uh, we've got supporting research. We've already talked about this, but I just wanted to make clear that you can use this as evaluation if you're asked to evaluate that there's research support for the idea from Rankin Jacobson, from Ash and from Milgram. And you can talk about all of those. The last thing to, to say is that actually when Milgram's participants were interviewed after the process or after having been through the experiment, um, they there were some really interesting things that they said about why they wouldn't obey some of them and that data is in your booklet on page 28 things like uh, a minister who's saying that actually his ultimate authority is God uh, things like an electrician who knows what electric shocks can do so it's it's all of the the things that we've listed in your booklet there are supporting a dispositional explanation rather than a situational one which this is so I've put a couple of tasks on the next two slides, which I suggest you have a go at as part of your notes and so on. I suggest you get kind of make some notes about each of these and then have a go at perhaps doing a couple of paragraphs or at least at the very least write them down and color code them so it's really clear whether they support or contradict and and make sure you've made some notes about how and why uh, and the other thing you could have a go at doing is just a, a brief essay plan or even write an essay for practice if you want to uh, about describe and evaluate one explanation of resistance to so social influence so you could choose one or if you wanted to challenge yourself you could make it a 16 marker and do two but I'll leave that with you okay that's our second explanation